Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a fun leet code problem called find n unique integers sum up to zero. It sounds a little mathy, but don't worry, the solution is actually quite intuitive. Let's break it down together. So here's the official problem statement. The main goal is pretty straightforward. We're given a single number, let's call it n. We need to create and return a list that meets three specific conditions. Let's really simplify what it's asking for. We get a number n Daban Sizax. We need to give back a list with n numbers in it. The catch is, no number can be repeated, and the grand total of all the numbers must be exactly zero. That's it. Okay, let's take the first example where n is 5. How can we get 5 unique numbers that sum to zero? The easiest trick in the book for getting a sum of zero is to use pairs of positive and negative numbers. You know, like 1 and negative 1. They cancel out. 2 and negative 2. They also cancel out. So, if we use those pairs, we've got four numbers that already sum to zero, but we need five numbers. What can we add that won't mess up our perfect zero sum? That's right, we can just add the number zero. It's unique, since we haven't used it yet, and adding it doesn't change the sum at all. So we take our pairs, and just pop a zero on the end. And there we have it, five unique numbers that sum to zero. This pattern works really well. If n is three, we can take one pair, like negative one and one, and then add a zero to get our third number. And what about the smallest possible case, when n is just one? Well, the only single number that sums to zero is zero itself. So that's our answer. So the general strategy here, which we can call a construction approach, is built on this idea of symmetry. For any number we decide to put in our list, we'll also put its negative version in. This guarantees that they'll cancel each other out, keeping our running total at zero. This leads to a really clean way to handle any n, zero back it. If n is an even number, we can satisfy the requirement using only these positive and negative pairs. For example, for n equals 4, we can use two pairs, but if n is an odd number, we'll have one number left over after making all the pairs. That's our spot for zero. It neatly solves the problem. Okay, so let's turn this logic into a step-by-step -step algorithm. First, we'll create an empty list to hold our answer. Then, we'll loop from 1 up to half of n. Inside the loop, for each number we count up to, we'll add both that number and its negative to our list. Finally, after the loop finishes, we just do a quick check. If the original n was odd, we tack on a zero, and that's all there is to it. And here's what that algorithm looks like in Python. It's really concise, and directly follows the steps we just outlined. Let's quickly break down the key parts. The heart of the solution is this for loop. The expression n double slash 2 performs integer division. So for an n of 5 it gives us 2. The range then goes from 1 up to darker bit, but not including, cop go pali. This means the loop will run for the numbers 1 and 2. In each run it adds the number and its negative to our answer list. This last part handles the odd numbers. The expression n% percent 2 gives us the remainder after dividing n by 2. If that remainder is 1, we know n is odd, and we simply append a 0 to our list to complete it. Simple as that. So how efficient is this? The time complexity is big O of n. This is because our loop runs about half of n times, so the work we do scales directly with the size of n. For space complexity, it's a bit of a how you look at it situation. The algorithm itself doesn't need much extra memory, so you could say it's big O of 1, or constant space. However, we do have to build the final answer array, which will hold n elements, so if you count that, the space is big O of n. To wrap things up, the big takeaway here is how powerful the concept of symmetry can be. Using pairs that cancel each other out is a fantastic trick for any problem involving a zero sum. It's also a great reminder to always think about the odd and even cases, as they often require slightly different handling. This problem shows that sometimes, you don't need a complex algorithm. You can just cleverly construct the answer directly. I hope this breakdown was helpful and made the solution feel a lot clearer. If you found it useful, please hit that like button and maybe subscribe for more explanations like this. If you have any questions or another way to solve it, drop a comment below. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Thanks for watching, keep coding, and I'll see you next time.